Tours and he's uh, he studied some of it. And he uh, he asked me to come and play and, and talk about it for a little while. So I'm going to do a little bit of that. I'll play a little bit. I'll talk, maybe even answer some questions. But um, first, let me just introduce you back here. This is uh, Mike Kirshner's back here, just painting, drawing. He's from uh, California. He's had a little uh, booth over there, table over there, uh, all weekend. He does some amazing work. You actually. Well, we're going to get him to talk about what he does here in a little bit. I, don't, I won't go through it. Uh, but I'm also going to bring up another good friend here in a, in a bit. But uh, I want to tell you, just tell you a little short uh, story of how I got into this and, and uh, what Ian wanted me to talk about. Um, I've been playing music for, I don't know, uh, almost 50 years now. About 46 years or so. Thank you. Thank you for clapping for that. I appreciate it. I've made it this long. And I'm the youngest of five brothers. So when I was born, my, oh, my four older brothers, Reggie, guitarist, Roy, they call him Future Man, the Baylor Fleck and the Fleck Tones. Y'all know him. My brother Rudy is a saxophone player. My brother Joseph plays keys. He's tour currently touring with the Steve Miller Band. So when I was born, Joseph plays keys, by the way. By the, by the time I was born, they knew already that they needed a bass player. And that was me right away. And I appreciate that, too, because I, for some reason, they gave me the best instrument. And I don't know why they saved it for me, but I'm glad they did. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, um, the way I learned and, uh, and what I learned and, and even more importantly what they didn't teach, what my brothers didn't teach me allowed me to learn music naturally the same way most of you learn to speak a lot of us speak English as our first language the way we learned it was a natural process and what I mean by that is no one really made us practice it no one stuck us in a room and said you gotta say these words over and over when we were a little baby and we said things wrong, nobody even corrected us. They just allowed us to be wrong, knowing that we would get it right. Because it wasn't so important to our parents, the words we chose, it was the emotion that we expressed with whatever we chose. So even when we learned to say a word incorrectly, our parents didn't correct us. They actually started learning it incorrectly too, and they would say it our way, you know. Instead of calling it a blanket, we call it a blankie. Who cares, right? The parents learn it our ways. But for some reason, a lot of us in learning music, it's like we feel that it has to be done one way. And we also feel, and this is not everybody, but when I look at the mainstream music curriculum, we're told that the more we practice, the better we get and the more natural we become. And it is true, but it just takes too long. It takes 10 or 20 years, but when you learn to speak a language in about two or three years. Now music to me is a language, so I ask the question as to why does music take so long? And it's because I believe we're not taking a natural approach in the musical curriculum, I will say this. And I'll just say this also, I'm going to tell you all sorts of things. I don't claim to be right about any of it, right? But I don't claim to be wrong about any of it anyway either so we're all here might as well listen all right so I just believed uh, for many years that there was a more natural way of learning music and the reason I could say it is because that's how I learned it I learned to play music at the same time and in the same way that I was learning to speak English and it was because I was surrounded by great people to jam with and if you think about when you're learning to talk you're jamming with people all the time and the people you jam with are much better than you right no big deal, we don't care. And a lot of the times we don't allow that in our, our musical curriculums. We stick the beginners with other beginners for many years and let them slowly work their way up to the ranks before they get to play with us good guys, you know? So imagine taking a little baby who wants to learn to speak and you don't let them speak to adults until they've learned enough. You stick them with other babies, you know? Of course, it'll take a long time. It's obvious it'll take a long time. So our approach to music is a little different. But around 1991, I had been playing for a long time. I was in the uh, 11th grade, and my uh, one of my older brothers, no, I'm sorry, 91, I was way up past 11th grade. Let me think, I gotta think. 
91, I was about 20 something, I think, early 20s. And anyway, so I hope I wasn't still in the 11th grade. <laughs> Math's not my, my, my forte. But anyway, I, um, my brother turned me onto a book by a naturalist, a man named Tom Brown Jr. A strange man, a controversial man, but a, a, a man with so much knowledge. And I got a few chapters into this guy's book and I told myself I have to find this man and, and see what he has to, what I can learn from him. This man wrote a book about his life learning uh, skills from an old Indian man, how to live off the land, how to track animals, a lot of spiritual skills. And it really touched my heart and I set out to find this man and I found him. And I found out he was teaching classes and I started studying with this man for nearly 10 years, going back and forth up to New Jersey of all places to learn about nature. <laughs> and which was a great place to do it actually. I didn't know they had you know, the Pine Barrens and all these wooded areas and beautiful areas. But I studied with this man for about 10 years learning about the, uh, the outdoors and, and how the body works and how the eyes work and how the mind works. And the coolest thing is I was sitting there during my first class with Tom and, and I'm telling myself, this guy, he may not know it, but he's teaching music. And I said, the same way he looks at the earth is the how I look at music. And I was able to use my love and knowledge of music to understand what Tom was teaching right away. He called it awareness, he called it tracking. He called it nature, he called it spirit, I called it music. And it, and it really is the same thing. So I started taking a lot of his exercises and turning them into musical exercises. And, uh, and I will say that's, that's a big way, uh, a big reason that my camp started in the year 2000. After about 10 years of studying with Tom, I started running a music camp using Tom's ideas. But I remember one of my early, early camps uh, classes with Tom. I was out in the woods and Tom's little little boy was out there. I can't remember how old Tommy the third was, but I, I was listening to all this Tom Brown stuff and it made sense, but it was hard for me to actually do it yet. I could understand it, but I couldn't see the tracks and everything. And I remember at this one particular class, little Tommy was there. He might have been six or eight years old or so. And, and I was asking him about tracking, you know, I was saying, well, can you see tracks? And he says, yeah, of course, you know. And I said, well, show me one. And he looks down at the ground and he says, there's some cat tracks right there. And I couldn't even see them, but it was neat to see this little boy, this little six-year-old kid, showing me animal tracks that, that uh, you know, me, a full adult, couldn't see. And I realized I had to learn how to see differently. And life is that way. Life is a lot that way. For example, if I were to play two notes, right? This is just a musical example. If I were to play two notes on my instrument, so if I were to play this note and this note at the same time, most people would tell us, and even music theory would tell us that these two half steps apart will clash you even hear that. So we could judge that as wrong. We could say that that's wrong. But here's a cool thing. If I just take one of those notes, right? If I take this note, this note right here, up an octave. Put this note right where it is. Take this note a half step away, up an octave. All of a sudden that note sounds beautiful. So all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, the two notes don't clash. Maybe I'm just viewing this in the wrong octave. And so the same way that Tommy, little Tommy, could see these tracks on the ground and I couldn't. I had to change my view, right? And I realized that, wow, music and nature is talking about the same things. The same way Tommy taught me a new way to see, the same way his dad did, music taught me a new way to see life. So now when I see things that clash, I have to realize they may not clash. Maybe I need to change my octave of how I'm viewing it. Add a third, and it becomes even more beautiful. So maybe the things aren't clashing. Maybe just all the pieces aren't there. 
or maybe I have to change my after. And it changed me the way I see the life, my, my life and the way I see people. Because maybe I, don't, I think that person is wrong, but maybe I'm the one that needs to change how I see it. So music and nature are related. They're very, very powerful. And, uh, and speaking of that little Tommy the third, that little young boy that I met, he's all grown up. And he's actually here at this festival. He's had a little table over there all week teaching people about nature skills. And um, this man is growing up in the footsteps and, uh, of his uh, popular and famous dad. And I'm going to bring Tommy up right now. Tom Brown III is here. One of my heroes.